everybody who wanted to join already joined. Uh, guys from Tech Division uh, wrote me uh, today that they can't uh, attend today's meeting because they have a summer party today. So there would not be any uh, anyone from the Tech Division company. So me and Valera will show uh, to you, Mark, the current status for uh, for the multi-source inventory project. So first of all, I want to share my screen and show this page. So the uh, multi-source inventory roadmap. So here uh, it's on the wiki, user stories, multi-source inventory roadmap. Uh, here, uh, this is a page uh, which consists from uh, all the all the open stories we have devoted for the multi-source inventory project. I moved all the stories we have uh, in a, uh, in a Epic One, Epic Two, and Epic Three for MNI project in a, uh, in our Jira, and also we. Uh, extended it with uh, some additional work. Uh, we found out, for example, like uh, algorithm and uh, zip geocoding. And also here I crossed out the stories which is already implemented and for which we have a, a working code in our uh, develop branch in the uh, Enchcom project. So during this week, we were working on uh, this story. Uh, source assignment for each product admin UI. And uh, now uh, Valera will show, will show uh, the demo, how this was implemented and also he will show you the general status of the project. So he will show you the stories which already uh, implemented and delivered to the develop branch. So it would be like a, uh, the demo of the current status of the multi-source inventory project. Okay, Valera, you can share the screen. Yeah, can you mute? Your... You can use mine, so it's not a problem. Okay. Hi, I, I am going to show what we did in last month. Shortly. First of all, it is managed source, sources. Oops. We have uh, basic grid with basic functionality. Uh, we can add new source. On, so on source page, we have base information contact info, fill set, address data, address de data. Okay. Uh, we can provide custom region, we can select from predefined regions. No. One second, you, you, United States, for example. And when we can assign parish to our source. Uh, by default, we use global shipping configuration is yes, uh, but we can't override for specific source. For example, I check to no and I assign some 
some specific carriers only for this source. Uh, uh, what is uh, global shipping configuration? It is It is global configuration for all sources. We can use all enable carriers when we can specify by default some carriers. It is global configuration for all sources. If you want to specify some uh, carrier set, you can uh, check to no, no use global configuration and uh, override configuration uh, next uh, we extend uh, product form for example add new product Product name, price, <clears throat> and now we uh, assign source to products. Uh, it is layout panel with grid. In this grid, we can find source, sort our sources, remove all filters. For example, select first and second down. We pro specify quantity on these sources. Uh, for example, second uh, is out of stock, say. It is not dynamic rows. It is uh, Ajax grid, uh, so we don't have a problem with performance. Save it and for example, replace. Remove second. Oh, problem is my browser. Uh, check. This is all check, for example. Search and specify new day, new info, save. Okay, uh, and finally, we now work, we are working, we are working as well, manage stock things. We can create new stock, CRUD, no, base CRUD operations. We have base CRUD. And now I'm working on assigning sources to stop. This work is not finished now. I'm going to finish in uh, Monday, Tuesday, in a couple of days. And I going to write and cover it with our functionality with API functional test and uh, I want to cover it our post controllers with integration test. Now it is not work, it is in progress. That's all. Okay, so you can stop sharing. Uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm.
Yeah, so I had I had one or two questions. So um, on the, um, I guess it's the page where you're defining the, the detail for each source. At the bottom, there's the carriers that are assigned to the source. Uh, um, so we'll share the screen so to make it easier. Yeah. Uh, source page, yes. At the bottom. In the carrier section. So it seems to me that the, the UX here is different is quite a bit different from how we do the same type of interaction in other parts of the admin. So normally it would be a place where the settings themselves are grayed out, and then there's a checkbox there that says use global configuration. So if you were uncheck that box, then the other part is not grayed out. And in this case, if you click that slider, um, you get a list of check boxes, um, and it would probably be more appropriate to have this be a multi-select box as it is done in the global settings. Uh -huh. So um, you propose here to make the behavior like vice versa to what we have now, because for now we propose like default behavior is to use default one, and uh, you have an ability to specify custom one. But you propose uh, to have this checkbox unchecked, so that there would be uh, a possibility to specify custom careers and uh, like default one. And if you want, you can like uh, fall back to the to the global shipping configuration, checking this uh, checkbox. Correct? No. So the behavior is still the same in that by default it should use the global shipping configuration as you see here. Mm -hmm. It's just that the interaction and the controls that are used, the, this using this slider here seems inconsistent from how we do other similar settings in the admin panel. Uh, an example would be something like B2B company credit or other areas where you would need to pick from multiple selections. To have check boxes instead of a multi-select is, is inconsistent. Like here, mm -hmm. um, even where it says specify carriers, if I decide that I'm going to override global settings, I would expect to see a control like this one, not the one that has an individual checkbox for each carrier. Okay, so we need to show this uh, panel with all the list of carriers uh, all the time. So it doesn't matter what, uh, what the state of checkbox we have, we need to show the, the whole list of carriers with selected uh, carriers, correct? Uh, no, maybe. Do you have B2B on this install? Uh, we have a B2B. Uh, I can share. Or maybe I could find a different one. To uh, show. I will. Could you please flare open? This. Yeah, I have one here too. We have a B2B, so. Uh, so I have a B2B. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just looking for. Uh, where should I go? Okay. So if you just view the detail for a single company, which is under customers, and click on companies. Uh, yeah, so edit the detail for that company. You have to scroll to the to right to see the edit link. Mm -hmm. And then the very last section in advanced settings, it's a bit similar. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you can see that, that use config settings, ignore the quotes one, that use config settings, if you uncheck that, 
and check it again. So actually, uh, it's interesting that it, <laughs> it's slightly bugged, but it should appear this way from the beginning. So if that box is checked, then everything here should be gray. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if you uncheck that box, yeah. then you have the ability to select, um, if you click that drop down where it says B2B payment methods and change it to um, specific payment methods. And the only question uh, I have, do we need like having this box checked, do we need to color the default preferences for the, for the default configuration? In a, like, for example, in a payment method here or in a, in a, in a list of shipping carriers, like uh, highlight the cash and delivery and like uh, credit card pay flow advance, like, like this one. If it's the um, default one. Yeah, I, I suppose it would be good, but it's not necessary because what you're allowing the user to do is either take the global configuration or set their own. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, I got you. So, I believe we will fix this component till the next demo. Yeah. The most important really is that you have that multi-select because first we want consistency in how the interaction works in the admin panel. But second, you could, this is another case where you could have a very large list of carriers. Um, I can't think of an example, but there are some companies that maybe they have, they're in a major city, they have some sort of third party delivery services or something like that. They could have quite a few. And so the interaction is, is much better suited to have a multi-select. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll fix it. Do you have any? Yes, on, the, on, the same, on the same screens, do we have, what are we doing for UX review of these screens? I know we had some designs a long time ago. Do, are we still having input from UX at this point? Uh, for this screen? Yeah. Uh, we actually did not because we use a pretty, pretty old mockup for this page. So we, we were more or less in a consistent with the old mockups for this page. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, we for now we have a problem. Uh, we have a performance problem uh, with the assignment uh, on a source page. So when we go to the source page and uh, we need to open the whole list of possible products to be assigned uh, to a current source. It's actually introduced a problem because we don't have for now a precise UI component to be used. Uh, because taking into account that amount of products, amount of SKUs could be pretty big one. All our UI components actually load all of the uh, all of the SKUs at once, and actually all they uh, all they just uh, do is just making a pagination on a front page uh, on a front end side but not actually making loading. Uh, that's why probably we need to use a grid. Uh, we need to use grid to make it possible to make this assignment. So it's pretty similar to what we have on a category page. So now what I will show you. So on a category page, when we are assigning products to some particular category, we use a grid. But here is, there is a trick here because this grid is pretty hard coded on a category page and this is not a new grid. This is old grid. So the, we can't just reuse this approach uh, and just to customize it as it's implemented on a category page. So you can see it actually from the look and feel that this grid is old one. So uh, do we like maybe uh, I don't know uh, whether whether it's feasible to uh, try to inject the grid, the new grid 
uh, in the in the source page or should we should we find some kind of with a workaround should we uh, change the design it will be or uh, some new ui component or we can reuse something like insert listening uh, insert listening in the not fly out panel uh, but in uh, in form so can, can we, we to investigate <laughs> so yeah we need to some time to investigate this so uh currently currently we are working on investigation how can we uh make a work around for this perf the, the potential performance issue because we don't have a performance issue now but taking into account that uh there could be merchant with like many thousand of sqs so there would be a problem to to make an assignment uh, from the source page from the product page it's not so big deal because we assume that it should not be quite uh, it should not be a lot of uh, a lot of sources to be assigned like maybe tens maybe hundreds so not a big deal to assign them and render them uh, but uh, taking into account that uh, amount of SKUs could be a uh, pretty big one so we need to, to use a proper UI component of whether uh, inject the existing grid into the page, into the form. So we will make this investigation till the next demo and maybe if uh, we will succeed, maybe we'll make a demonstration of, uh, of this assignment. Yeah, maybe we're going to work on reservation next week because it is more... Uh, Okay, so uh, Mark, do you have any other question regarding the look and feel? No, I, I don't. And even on this new grid, I think we should just make sure we get some consultation with the UX team if we have a question. I mean, we, we can provide to them our requirements. So in this case, it needs to be performant and we may need to handle a very large number of items, but then that they can recommend the best, the best control for that use case. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, getting some results uh, of our investigation, uh, I will provide the output to Evgen Banek uh, to uh, negotiate with him and get uh, his feedback regarding this. Okay, perfect. Okay, so... Uh, okay. One more time. So we will work uh, on the next week. So we're going to uh, close this story. So source assignment per each product in admin UI. So it was demonstrated uh, today by Valerie. So if you uh, if you agree, we can we can close it, and we will work on the product assignment per each source and uh, also source and stock assignment API. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and next story, admin UI for sources to stock assignment. Yeah, these stories are in the development and I will update the status now. And development and development. Oops, wrong one.
So we finish source assignment per each product. Uh, and I move it to done. And we move to under development the story for admin UI for source to stock assignment. Yes. Correct. Okay, so if there is no any other questions, we probably can finish today's meeting. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Bye.